the Madman! Welcome to the top cards of Custom Hearthstone, week of November 3rd. So let's start with Chen Storm Stout. It's a one card deck card, just like Whizbang. Uh, you start the game with the last deck you lost to, which means you just simply put it into a deck, and then it's your deck. Note that no, you can't play against Adventure and then Q ranked. Uh, and no, you can't Q against Wilds and go to standard with it. So it carries together like the same type. So I guess you could do Brawl against Brawl, you could do Standard against Standard, you could do Wild against Wild, and then probably Ranked uh, keeps it within maybe, but that's not as important. It can never be too imbalanced, right? Because the best you can do is to just have a fair deck, and you're even at a slight disadvantage because you may not know how to play the deck as well as the others. However, this deck actually has a major problem to it. It has such a big problem that I'm going to actually rate the design of this two stars as much as I love the card. This is legitimately a one card deck that you could get to top legend with. Furthermore, it might exacerbate the meta in terms of more of the decks that keep winning will be out there because the Chen Storm Stout players will be sporting that deck a little bit more often. Uh, furthermore, you might argue, but you don't know what's going to be in your deck. Well, that's going to kind of make people really need to get Deck Tracker, which will probably load up your deck if you're playing a Chen Storm Stout deck. So there's a lot of design flaws here. In terms of balance, five stars, I guess. But yeah, there's a major problem when one card can be your entire deck. Because I do want Blizzard to at least get some money and you could just play this for like the two years that it would be in rotation. Trojan Horse, four mana Paladin minion, zero four. Balakrai, give this minion to your opponent. Death Rattle, fill your opponent's board with Silver Hand Recruits. So it reads a little bit strangely because you might think it's almost worthless, but just as a reminder, you're giving the Trojan Horse to your opponent, which means when you kill it, uh, your board will be filled with Silver Hand Recruits, so in a way, it's 4 mana fill your board of Silver Hand Recruits, but you need to complete a small mini quest of killing the Trojan Horse. That's a very flavorful way of doing it. I mean, spoiler for those of you who haven't read this book yet. A Trojan Horse is gifted to the enemy, and there's actually your soldiers in it! Wow! I like the flavor of it, I like the design of it, and... It seems pretty well balanced as a 4 mana fill your board of 1-1s, uh, one with the slight requirement that you do have to kill the 0-4 on the opponent's side, which is sometimes pretty tough. But I can see like this card could be really powerful too. You have the True Silver equipped, you play the Trojan Horse, uh, and then like on a future turn you just swing the Trojan Horse uh, with the True Silver and then you level up. A little bit dangerous, but I think it's a fair enough card. Warrior, 2 mana, 2-3 two, minion. Armor Believer! After this attacks a hero, game 3 armor. Design, 3 stars, this is a little bit boring, but seems functional. Balance, 5 stars. Seems like a card that could just be printed, and I even like the name. Something that Blizzard would totally do too. Next we have Warden of Ironforge, 3 mana, 1-1, one, one, battle cry, add this minion stats to all minions in your hand. So it's a hand buff card, which wants you to buff it while it's in your hand. And there's actually quite a bit of a flaw, because it gets such a benefit when it gets hand buffed that it actually gets a bit ridiculous. Like, you simply give it plus one, plus one, and then it's three mana, one, uh, two, two, buff all of your minions in hand by two. Like, that seems insane. Not to mention, with the current design of it not being legendary, you could play Warden of Ironforge buffing your Warden of Ironforge, which means your next Warden of Ironforge would buff your entire hand by, like, a ridiculous amount. This card is one of those cards that can be balanced in certain cases, but should never be printed just because the design is so restrictive. The design, I'm going to give two stars, not one just because you could potentially salvage it by making it a huge mana cost. The balance is in a strange spot because right now it would probably not make even a splash in the meta, but if there were any hand buff cards around, it would be way too OP. So. The balance is just like a, it's tied into design here in that it cannot be balanced. So I guess in that case I'll do one star balance. Any balance that would be done with this card would be temporary, and it's just too big a restriction on design. Next up we have Fell Knowledge, a one mana warlock spell. Discover a spell, if you have 15 or less health, discover a priest spell instead. This card's currently a bit weak, but kind of cool. 
bit of flavor in the sense that if you are that low on health, then the priest spell you discover could get you um, health back. And it's like, oh man, it's kind of got a little bit of renowned darkness flavor to it. So I'm going to give the design of this five stars. I think it's a great idea. Uh, the balance though is currently three stars because one mana discover a spell is not strong enough and one mana discover a spell from a priest class is also not strong enough. So what I would suggest is instead something like maybe two mana and then two mana discover a spell if you have 15 or less health, discover a priest spell additionally and then it'd be like two mana discover two cards which would be kind of cool. Arbor the Eldest Treant, it's a druid hero card. I think we are stopping to calling them Death Knight cards, right? Just basically a hero card. Battle cry, for the rest of the game, your truants have rush. Uh, not a big battle cry, not a big effect. And then two mana hero power, which goes ties in a lot with the constant passive effect. Special treatment, transform a minion into a treant with the same stats. So this looks a bit innocuous at first, like, oh, is that even strong enough? It just lets you change minions to treants? But it has two big effects. You can give any uh, card you play rush with two mana. Turn into a treant, and then rush away with it. So that's kind of cool, and it's kind of the big intent of the card, but there's other things you can do with it. Like, if you have a minion already on the board, you can attack with it, and then you can special treatment it, and then you can attack again with rush. And then furthermore, you can even use special treatment to turn your opponent's minion, transform it into just a treant, which would mean it loses its abilities. Uh, though it keeps the same stats, so it's kind of like Silence. It gets rid of Death Rattles, gets rid of abilities, though it does not get rid of stats. Do I think that that's a little bit too oppressive, that you can constantly pseudo-silence things? And I feel like, nah, that's probably fine. So, design five stars. This card is countering the cards that have abilities, mainly, and it might want to be used in a Treant deck. I honestly think it's a little bit weak, but it's got so many modes to it that you can hit the opponent's minions as well as your own, uh, that I think it would be a printable card and that it would not be overpowered. It's just got a really different angle to it, so it's tough to evaluate. So I'm just going to give the balance five stars, but it's kind of like with a big question mark. My personal gut is that it's way too weak, but I've heard opinions ranging from way overpowered to like, way underpowered. So interested in hearing your thoughts exactly on how powerful this card is. Next up we have Flaming Vortex, 9 mana legendary mage spell. Deal 2 damage to all minions wherever they are. Wow. And the intent of this card also is if you hit a 2 health minion with it, you can draw it and then it'll be a 0 health minion. Uh, which is kind of a dead draw, but if it has death rattle then, you know, it can still go. There's a lot of strange things going on with this card. What happens if you damage your Acolyte of Pain in your deck? You probably draw a card. What happens if there's Death Rattle? Well, uh, you do get it in your hand, so the Death Rattle doesn't trigger. What happens if it has Divine Shield? Maybe when you play it doesn't have Divine Shield anymore. It's pretty weird, and there would have to be all sorts of code things and, like, specific situations you'd have to design this around. I can tell this would be a coding nightmare. Furthermore, it's got the problem of it's really depressing when your opponent Flaming Vortexes you, and you actually have two health minions or under in your deck, and then you draw them, and it's like, oh wow, I did nothing. So it feels really, really bad, so for that reason, design one star. And the balance, uh, honestly, it's probably underpowered, but it's really bad form to have this grief type card. I'm not going to rank the balance on this just because the design is so flawed that I don't think the exercise of thinking how balanced this is would be right, but just as a note, it's probably low star balance only because it's underpowered, uh, and yet it should never be printed. Itharius, a neutral dragon, 5 mana, 2, 5. Have plus 1, plus 1 for each dragon in your hand. Based off the comments I read, I honestly believe that this card was only upvoted because of the art, and while that is pretty amusing, I don't think it should even really be, uh, a bonus that this art looks this way. Like, can you imagine the actual portrait of the card? I think that the design is okay. It's pretty boring. It's just a dragon that gets bigger based on whether or not you have dragons in your hand and it's an aura. So the, it's not a battle cry. It keeps switching based on whether or not you draw dragons or play dragons. 
Three star design, four star balance. I think the balance is currently underpowered if you evaluate it based off of average of like having two dragons in your hand. Then this is a five mana four seven currently, which is lower than uh, vanilla stats. So I think that it should be a little bit more powerful than this, which is to say that buff the stats a little bit or lower the mana and nerf the stats a little bit, something like that. Miniature Gunner, a one mana two one. At the end of your turn, if this is attacked, gain Wind Fury. If this is attacked twice, gain Mega Wind Fury. A Snowball card on turn one. On turn one, it's a 2-1. On turn two, it's still a 2-1. You attack with it, gains Wind Fury. On turn three, it's a 2-1 with Wind Fury. You attack twice with it, it gains Mega Wind Fury. On turn four, you could attack four times with it. Is that a problem? Yes. And even though it's a one mana card with one health, it's still a problem because it limits a lot of design space. It limits Power Word Shield, it limits cards that are low mana that buff health, uh, because if you just buff it, you just win with it early on. Uh, so even though it's a 2-1, I consider this like a serious flaw, but it does have a lot of flavor in that it's like taking time to wind up its machine gun, which is really cool. Uh, design I'm gonna give four stars. I think the design can be salvaged. It should be put on a minion that is not one mana. Uh, the balance on this one is two stars, overpowered, and even if not overpowered, uh, really unfun to get this played on you turn one if you happen to be playing a deck with no answer, or if you happen to get played on this turn one and then it gets power and shielded or something. Leviathan, the Tidehunter. Six mana, three, five, Murloc. Interesting. With Taunt, Battlecry, freeze all other characters, gain plus one health for each frozen character. Uh, you and the opponent are a character, so at minimum, six mana, three, seven. Shaman control card, which freezes everyone and taunts. I think that's in Shaman flavor. Design, I'm gonna give four stars to it. I'm actually docking a star because I'm not entirely sure about this Murloc part of the card. It seems out of place for a Tidehunter. It's quite a bit too overpowered at the moment. If there are four minions on the board, then this comes out as a six mana 311 with taunt. And furthermore, it also delays everyone by taunt, uh, by freezing. So that's just too powerful. It needs to rise in mana cost or lower in stats. And not just by a little, but by a lot. And it would literally be a Shutterwalk Winter because you would just play Shutterwalk, you would freeze everything and then lock down everything. You wouldn't even need to play a win condition of Shutterwalk. You could just play a bunch of Shutterwalks and then you would just keep everything locked down, and then eventually you kill them with Shutterwalk attacking. Boy, does that sound terrible. Asterisk, you can print this after Shutterwalk rotates out of standard, and then balance two stars. Once Shutterwalk has rotated out, it still needs to be fixed in terms of mana, as well as stats. And then finally, we have the Living Altar. Nine mana, nine, nine. Battle cry, have your hero's remaining health and add the damage done to your Cthune. The design I'm going to give five stars. It's a really cool theme. You are literally sacrificing yourself for Cthune. I think the idea is very cool. Big risk, big reward, and it's a clear setup play. The balance on this card, though, I'm going to give two stars because it's too weak. If you're playing a Cthune deck, Cthune as a finisher was probably already strong enough, and killing yourself is not really recommended, and that's killing yourself by potentially quite a lot. And then all you get is like a big guy with it, so. There's a few ways to fix the balance, though you do need to have this be a high mana cost because it has a pretty fantastic ability. Uh, so probably get more stats or something, or maybe lower the mana cost to 7, and you could still have premium stats on it. So that's this week's custom Hearthstone cards, really looking forward to next week and seeing how people will implement new expansion mechanics in. Maybe there will be some guesses at spirits or loas, uh, maybe there's going to be some overkills, we'll take a look.